Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Stephen Kariungi. We continue with our topic of discussion. We are discussing sexual reproduction in animals. So in our previous uh, lesson, we discussed the gestation period, which is the period between conception and birth and all the activities that are required to take place during that particular uh, stage. So today we are going to continue and discuss birth. Birth is also called parturation. Parturation or birth. And this is what happens at the end of the gestation period. So in other words, if we ask ourselves, what is birth? We can say that birth is the expulsion of fully developed uh, fetus from the uterus through the birth canal or through the vagina. So we are saying that it's the expulsion of the fully developed fetus from the uterus. So we are saying this is the expulsion of the fully developed fetus from the uterus, expulsion of the fully developed uh, fetus from the uterus through the vagina or by surgical procedure. or by surgical procedure. Uh, the surgical procedure uh, that uh, uh, leads to birth is what is known as cesarean section. So the surgical procedure So the surgical procedure that removes the fully developed fetus by making an incision on abdominal and uterine wall is called cesarean delivery. So you can either have a, a normal delivery whereby the fully developed uh, fetus is expelled through the vagina or through the birth canal. But if it is done via a surgical procedure uh, which involves an incision on the abdominal or uterine wall, then that is called cesarean delivery. So let's look at uh, the process of birth. The process of birth is initiated uh, by a certain hormone that is known as oxytocin. Is initiated by a hormone called oxytocin. And what oxytocin does is that it, in, uh, it removes the inhibitory effect of progesterone. Progesterone is the hormone that maintains the pregnancy. So the moment the oxytocin is released, the level of progesterone is lowered, and that is what initiates the, the process of birth. So we are saying that birth is initiated by a hormone called oxytocin released by the pituitary gland. Uh, the hormone removes the inhibitory effects inhibitory effects 
of the contraction of the myometrium. So myometrium is the outer uterine wall. So once the hormone is uh, released, the myometrium starts contra uh, uh, contracting. This contraction of the myometrium and this is what brings about the, the labor pains. So we are saying that this occurs in phases or in occurs in phases and is referred to as labor or the labor pains. During these contractions, the cervix dilates or expands, releasing the mucus plug, releases the mucus plug. So the mucus plug that was preventing the infection from getting into the uterus is uh, removed. The amnion then ruptures, releasing the amniotic fluid. Releasing the amniotic fluid that lubricates the birth canal. Or that lubricates the vagina. So the contractions continue from upwards from upwards down, expelling the fetus from the uterus. So we are saying that uh, after the contractions have started, because of the effect of the hormone oxytocin, uh, those contractions that are happening in phases that we are referring to them as the labor pains. And as a result, as they become more and more intense, the, uh, the cervix dilates or expands, releasing the mucus plug that had closed the entry into the uterus. And then after that, the amnion ruptures or breaks down, releasing the amniotic fluid. And the amniotic fluid, once it is released, it lubricates the birth canal or lubricates the vagina, making the birth to take place easily and the contractions continue from upwards down, expelling uh, the fetus from the uterus. So the placenta is then released, is later released as an after birth. The placenta is then released as an after bath. There is also another hormone, another hormone called prolactin is released that stimulates that stimulates the mammary glands 
and the mammary glands to produce milk. So prolactin is released to stimulate the mammary glands to produce milk. Then after that, then oxytocin triggers the release of the milk into the areola space. So that is basically how birth uh, takes place. And we are saying that after birth, the placenta is later released as an afterbirth, after which another hormone that is called prolactin that stimulates the mammary glands to produce milk is released. Then after that, oxytocin, the one that had initiated birth, triggers the release of milk into the areola space from where now the, the baby can be able to circle from. So we'll have an assignment So the assignment, the first question, explain the process of birth from the onset until the placenta is released. And number two, state the role of these hormones after birth. A, oxytocin. And B, prolactin. So we'll stop there until next time. Goodbye. Thank you.